Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Angie. If you're new here, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below to join our family. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on the mirror clone edit that I like to do that looks a little bit like this. Now to do this, all you need is a mirror, your camera, and a lot of patience. So if you guys are interested, keep on watching. So I've got my full length mirror here set up. It's normally in a different part of the room, but for the purpose of shooting this video, I just wanted a pretty simple background. So there's not a lot going on behind me. I'm going to show you guys at the end of this video how you would do it with a different size mirror. But for the purpose of this, the main tutorial is going to be with the full length mirror. It is okay if you can see your equipment in the reflection of the mirror because it's not going to show up in the camera if you position the camera right. So I've got my ring light here and then my tripod, which I'll link below in the description box and my phone. So I've already got my phone on video mode. Like I said, I shoot from back camera. Back camera is going to give you better quality, but if you need to shoot from front camera, I totally understand. So you can see here that I have full view of the mirror. I know the tripod's kind of covering it, but as you can tell, I have full view of the mirror. Now, what you have to do first is mark your spot. So you guys know from my other videos that I use my slides for the most part to mark my spot. This is going to take a couple different shots to make sure you get it right. So you are gonna have to film a little bit here and there. But what I do basically is I'm gonna go ahead and record myself just standing here for a few seconds. And basically what you wanna make sure you achieve when you do this is that one, you can see yourself in the reflection of the mirror in the camera, but also that you're not covering any part of the mirror. And you'll see more what I mean by that when we go into editing, but this is how you're going to determine how far back you need to stand and if you need to stand over more to the left. So let's go ahead and look at this footage here. So I can see from this footage that part of me is covering the right side of the mirror. So what I need to do is move my shoes more over to the side. And let's just move them back a little bit for good measure. And then we're gonna try it again. So this takes a little bit of trial and error, but if you're gonna do a lot of videos like this, I would recommend just marking your spot so you know for future reference. And of course my bags are kind of in the way. Normally I slide my door thing over. And then you daily just need a couple seconds of footage. Leave your shoes where they are because if that spot works, then you're gonna keep using it. And then we'll come back here to the footage and see if this footage works. Now this footage should work. You can see me clearly in the mirror view. What you have to pay attention to is to keep your actions in the mirror to a minimal because you don't wanna actually cover the mirror. That's the most essential thing here is you don't actually wanna cover the mirror in any of your footage. For editing purposes, I'm going to go ahead and film a clip really quick and then I'm gonna change my outfit and then show you guys. So in post, you guys know what I'm doing. I'm wearing a different shirt so you guys will be able to see in editing how it looks between the mirror clip and the actual clip. Hey, Mochi. So for people who might be wondering how I hold my spot, Basically, I just put my shoes there. And if I need to, what I'll literally do is before I move, I'll just make sure my shoes take up that spot. So that's kind of how I hold my spot. But like I said, you can use tape or any kind of marker that really works for you to hold your spot. Now for the second part of the clip, obviously I don't have a remote like I did in the last one. We'll choose my phone case. You want to show you pressing something so it looks like you're pushing a remote and changing your picture on the mirror. Like I said, you don't want to move your footage in your camera in any way. You want all of the clips to be shot in the exact same position. But for this, you really only need to see part of yourself. So I can move up slightly. You can't really see this where I'm standing and that's me pressing the phone case as the remote. I could move up very slightly. So we're gonna do that just to make it look a little cleaner when we edit it. Okay, so now in this clip, you can see more of my arm. Honestly, I could move up a little bit more if I wanted to, but I think I'm okay with this, especially you'll see in masking, it's good to leave a little bit of room, especially if you're not a professional or this is your first time trying an edit like this. But basically what you wanna just make sure you focus on is keeping the camera and the mirror in the exact same spot. You want everything that's gonna actually be in the shot to remain unmoved in between the two different sets of clips or four or five or however many different clips that you actually shoot. And you also wanna make sure that you're not covering the mirror in any way, but that you are still visible in the mirror. For this part, you really only need, you know, your side of you pressing the, you know, the remote 
in the mirror or in the frame but for the mirror clips you want to make sure that you're visible in the mirror but you're also not covering the mirror and you'll see why in a moment and the other thing too is if you do any actions don't try to do big actions that will cover the mirror like don't try to force your arm out too much when you're holding the remote because that's going to cover the mirror don't try to like you know leap and do jumps and things like this unless you've already measured where you need to stand and you'll have enough room to do it in the mirror Okay, so what you see me doing here is just a little clip maintenance. I like to expand the clips because they're easier to work on. Then I'm just going through and rearranging the clips. Obviously, the clip that isn't the mirror clip, I want to be the first one in the timeline. And then I'm just going to mute out the audios and erase the parts of the clip that we're not actually going to use in the final part of the video. And as always, the video editing app that you use does not matter. Every video editing app is going to have the masking feature, which is the feature that we are doing the tutorial with today. So anyone you want to use, but some apps, the masking feature will probably be premium and you might have to pay for it. So the clip of you in the mirror wearing different outfits doing whatever it is you're doing and the reflection of the mirror we are going to click and drag that clip onto a second layer and put it directly above the other clip where we're using the phone case as the remote now with the clip selected you're going to look for something called mask the type of mask is going to vary based on the software or app that you use but generally anything that says linear mirror or rectangle or square anything like that is going to be the easiest to use for a mirror type edit and once you've selected the type of mask you want to use, you are going to drag the mask part over the mirror part of the footage. Pay a lot of attention to detail to the other part of the footage that isn't masked because if the mask is covering it, it might cause it to look a little warped and unnatural and you want it to look as seamless as possible. Now if you're doing this and you're like, okay, but I really don't understand what masking is, masking is essentially overlaying a clip over another but making it look like one seamless clip as opposed to two separate ones. So when you're working with more of like a square kind of bathroom mirror, the same thing is going to be true. You're going to make sure you shoot on a tripod so that you don't have, you know, accidentally moving your camera or setting it up in the wrong spot or anything like that. You are going to have to pay more attention to the placement because with this, because it is a wider mirror, it is easier for you to see the mirror, but to still have the camera accidentally be in the shot in the reflection of the mirror. Now with this, I recommend standing more to the side in one shot and then to the other side in another so that way you're not actually covering your reflection and you guys will see that in a second but with this it's really just depends on the type of mirror that you're using how you're going to set up the shot but with this one i'm just going to leave my shoes here and again have a marker every single time so you know where to stand make sure to i also forgot to say this make sure you lock focus when you're shooting this is going to help create the illusion better so that you're not having the lighting change too much especially if you're wearing like light and dark clothes, the lighting will change automatically, so make sure you lock focus. Okay, so this is the footage I ended up with. You can't really see my reflection, I'll see, I'll show it to you guys in post. But basically, we've got the edit that I'm going to use of me in the mirror, and then we're going to use me facing the other direction as the other clip. So let's go ahead and take all this footage into post and show you guys how to edit it. So I already went ahead and muted the footage, rearranged the footage, and deleted the parts of the footage we're not going to use. So we're going to do the same thing as before and drag the mirror clip to a second layer. Now same thing as before, we're going to select the type of mask that we're going to want to use, and then we're going to use it to cover the mirror part of the footage only. Now with this, because the lighting is a little bit different, you are going to need to do a little bit of blending and this is going to vary on how this can be done in different apps and different softwares but usually it's just a slight change just to make it look more seamless but usually if you don't do this most the average person won't even notice and once you've blended the footage if you decide to do that like i said you can totally skip this step because the average person watching your video is not even going to notice once you've done that you should have a perfectly edited mirror clone and that's it And that is how you do the edit. Now with a lot of patience and a little bit of creativity, you guys can make some really, really creative, fun edits. So thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.